What's up guys, NJ here, and we're having a look today at the Sane Smart Pro 32 soldering iron. Now, I had to change soldering iron recently. I've, I've been soldering for, for probably like two decades. I've been doing it a long time, uh, and I've been through a lot of soldering irons. And there are some great soldering irons out there, and there are some really quite terrible ones. I've tried them all pretty much. And normally when you want a great soldering iron, you have to spend upwards of 100 bucks really to get into the territory of things like the Hakos and the, the really high quality irons that are very true with their temperature control um, and soldering is one of those things it can be a really enjoyable experience but I know a lot of you get really frustrated with soldering out there so um, there are a few things out there to really help uh, make your life easy and this guy here is one that I am so happy to have come across I, I say I came across it I was uh, recently I've just uh, one of my other soldering irons died it's one that I've replaced three times under warranty and it's yeah it's not a cheap soldering iron I'm not going to name it but it gave me all kinds of problems um, I was about to throw in the white towel and go out and uh, get a hacko and my good buddy Chipko said to me have you heard of this guy um, it also goes under the name the TS100 there's a few names for this same soldering iron and here in the UK it's around 60 pounds so uh, no one sent this to me I bought it with my own money over on Amazon I thought I'll take a punt on it and if it doesn't work out I'll just send it back and revert to plan A and get the hacko but I'm so glad I got to try this guy out because it is absolutely brilliant and really something all of you should consider having in your arsenal so let's have a quick look at the soldering iron itself and this is it, it's absolutely uh, tiny. It's a 32-bit processor and it has a PID controller, hooray, more PID controllers. Um, it's only a matter of time I guess before we start getting PID controllers into other aspects of our hobby. Um, but yeah, the thing that makes this, uh, there's a lot of things that make this fantastic. Um, it operates from a DC input of, well it's rated from 12 to 24 volts, although a quick look at the schematic seems to show to my eyes that it could probably handle quite easily up to 26. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a DC input with a, a barrel jack straight in the end here. Um, so you could literally run this off a live poly at the field, make up an XT60 to barrel jack uh, lead and you've got yourself a great portable soldering iron. And this is essentially seen as, as a portable soldering iron, but I'm here to tell you, do you know what? This could very easily be your main soldering iron. And I think, to be honest with you, from my experience having built a couple of quads with it now, this will be my main soldering iron. One of the great things about it is its temperature control is so damn accurate. Uh, and that's where a lot of the other um, soldering irons, um, certainly in this price range, and even some of them slightly above, are nowhere near as accurate as this thing. Having uh, worked on many different gauges of wire and knowing what temperatures things should be at for the uh, solder to flow, I can tell you now a lot of them are just straight up lying and you have to max them out at 400 degrees to get what in reality is probably more like 300 out of them. Um, the temperature control just isn't accurate. This guy is so accurate that um, when I left it in temperature display mode once it had cooled down, it was actually displaying the same room temperature as my pretty damn accurate house thermostat was. Um, that's how good this thing is. So not only has it got incredibly good temperature control giving you very precise uh, temperatures to work with and the reason that's important for instance let's take ESC wire. Um, if, if you're doing uh, something like ground pads on PDBs, you might want to work anywhere between 350 and 400 degrees to get a good flowing solder when doing those big thick uh, like 12 gauge wires etc. But when you're, when you're working with ESC wires, and for God knows why they still wrap them in plastic insulation, but um, wire like this which has the plastic. I mean, this stuff, obviously, it's terrible. It's not very flexible, and it melts so easily. How many times have you been wiring this to a signal pad on a flight controller? You've wired it for the briefest of seconds, and of course, the uh, plastic has just melted around it. Well, with this guy, you can run it down at like 220 to 250 degrees, get it at the point where it's just flowing the solder and it won't melt the plastic on this. And I tried that out and it was absolutely perfect. No melted plastic on the ESC signal wires and a good solder join. And then you can ram it straight up to 400 um, and there you go, you've got your, your, your ground wires, etc. Again, one thing that's important that I should mention, make sure you have decent quality solder. I don't like lead-free solder. It doesn't flow as well. It doesn't finish as nice. So I just use some uh, pretty straightforward 
um, you know, decent lead solder with, uh, this is cord, so it does have the flux in it. If you're really meticulous about results, you really want to use non-cord and use a uh, flux pen. That will always get you the prettiest looking finishes. Um, but this, I'm, I'm very happy with the way that this, this, this is working out. So yeah, good solder is definitely one part of the equation. Uh, the other thing that's fantastic about this is how fast the thing heats up. Um, let me just plug this in here. Um, so if I turn that on, I think I've got it set to go to 300 and something. You know, look at how fast that is heating up. And if we wait, uh, where are we now? Two. So that should definitely be hot enough now to melt. And there you go. Look at that. Straight away, it's done. That really is in absolutely incredible at how fast that's done that. Um, and I've actually loaded on here the... Um, open source firmware and I'll put a link in the description by Ralim I think it is um, so this is a custom rewrite of this firmware and he's able to run this up to 450 degrees and I've checked that and it's working fine and to be honest with you I think it's absolutely perfect nothing's it's got no problems handling that um, one of the nice things that the Ralim firmware has done it also allows you to adjust all the settings for this on the pen itself um, whereas the original firmware that comes with this although they might have changed this now you had to edit a text file because this does actually have a USB uh, slot on the back for a mini USB, micro USB, micro USB, um, that you can plug into to here like a standard phone USB connector and you can uh, put this in DFU mode and, and uh, change the firmware and uh, mess around with the settings of the iron. So this custom firmware you can change all the settings right here um, which is really really useful and I'm just trying to remember how I get into the settings. That's the cool menu, there we go, so settings is the back button. And then we have here, so we have uh, the under voltage cutoff, which is at 10 volts. Uh, another nice thing about this particular custom firmware, if I wanted to run, say, a high voltage lie poly like a 5S into here, um, I think with the stock firmware you couldn't raise this uh, under voltage cutoff high enough to where it would protect the lie poly if it over discharged, whereas this... Um, uh, this under voltage cutoff goes all the way to 20, 10 to 24 volts. Um, so that's a really useful feature to protect your LiPo from over discharging. So another good reason for this custom firmware. It's got a sleep timer, which is how long it takes before the unit goes to sleep. Um, uh, what else have we got? Uh, SLTME. Uh, what is that? Sorry, that is the sleep timer. I'm getting mixed up. SH shutdown time, how long the unit will wait after movement before shutting down completely. Uh, and this has a gyroscope in it, so it will actually sense uh, when it's not being used. And you can configure how, you know, I've got it for six minutes before it um, shuts itself off. Um, and then if it's in that kind of sleep, uh, if, it, if it's sleeping at the time you put it down, it started cooling down to a predefined temperature, you can just, as soon as you pick it up, it knows you've picked it up and it will bring the heat back. Um, so yeah, it, it really is good. There's the, you can turn that uh, gyro on or off with the motion true or false. Uh, sense H, so that's the motion sensitivity, when it, whether you want it to be high or low. And the temperature in degrees C or Fahrenheit. Um, and then flip display, and you'll notice that uh, um, I'm actually a left-hander. I, I use the iron with my left hand, so I've been able to flip the display so it works for me. So there's some really nice touches in here. Um, for this soldering iron. One other thing I noticed as well, um, I know some people complained about the ergonomics of this saying well there isn't much protection here you could probably be more likely to burn yourself but let me just uh, let me just show you something here so let's uh, reheat that again nuts how quickly this thing heats up so we're up at you know right we're over 300 um, you can see you know we're not messing around that really is the temperature um, and you can see here look I'm holding that can't see any sizzling skin, right? So they've, again, it's brilliant that this tip does a great job of just focusing the heat in the right area. So it doesn't actually matter. And there we are at 3, 380, um, stable. So yeah, all in all, this guy is an absolutely brilliant soldering iron. It's been really easy to work with. The temperature control is active. The price is fantastic. And it has custom firmware and it's super portable and you can run a lipo, a lipo off it. I mean, what more could you want? This gets an enormous thumbs up from me. I shall put links in the descriptions. Go and get one. And while we're here, let me just show you a quick soldering tip. I've got a series of these that I'd probably like to go through over the coming months, um, but they're just small things that can help reduce the headaches while you're doing some soldering and things that I've picked up over the years. So let's have a look at doing some wire to wire soldering.
Okay, so there are various ways to uh, join two wires together, and I've seen a variety of these approached over the years. Um, one way that I see people do um, with wiring is to grab it and twist it up together, and then put some solder into it and uh, heat shrink over it, and you've got this kind of affair, which just obviously looks absolutely terrible and not a great idea at all. Uh, the other way I see it is to use a set of helping hands and to hold these guys uh, one on top of the other like that and then to solder it together again you're just kind of relying on the solder it's a little bit brittle and if it isn't done well that will pull apart and also it looks again it looks absolutely terrible um, the way that I found is a really nice way to do wire to wire joining is to do the following um, first of all I'll strip back um, just enough I don't want to go too crazy and I'll usually do this just running the knife around the side of the insulation uh, and then pulling that off and then what I will do with that is just to use my finger to just basically push and spread the end into kind of like, um, I guess it's kind of like a brush, uh, a brush head. So we're going to do that with one end. And I'm going to do exactly the same with the other wire that I want to join it with. So you don't have to go crazy, just kind of pull it apart with the tip of your finger so that it's in that slightly brush-like state. And then we're going to get the two ends and we're going to push them into each other so that they kind of uh, line up. So get it as nice as you can. Push them um, together so that they kind of go as far as they can. And then once we've done that, I'm just going to use my fingers to go around and squash that down so that all those nicely interlock. Now the nice thing about doing it this way, of course, is that the wire is just one continuous wire, which is a much nicer thing um, than to do it uh, side by side, where you're actually making the wire thicker or a big bulge in the middle. Uh, and it also means I can now do this one-handed if I wanted to solder uh, that, which is which is obviously uh, a little bit easier if you're short of hands or you're in the field and you haven't got a set of helping hands around. However, I am going to use a set of helping hands as I've got them here. So with that done, I'm now going to take my soldering iron and I always clean the tip just before I start. Apply a little bit of solder to the actual iron and then I'm going to make contact and I'm going to drop the, feed the solder into it like so, so that it starts to flow and you just need enough like so. And then again clean the tip and if we pull that away, and I'll try and give you a little bit of a better look at that, we've now got a seriously strong join there on the wire. Nice decent bit of solder which has flowed into, flowed into the wire nicely. Um, those are like, uh, you know, those two brush heads together mean that all the wires are inter, interwoven as well. So that is really pretty damn strong now. There's, that's definitely not coming away. If it's going to fail it'll be somewhere else on the wire under strain. But the nice thing is of course it's nice and flexible still, um, which is the really good thing. Uh, we obviously, you put some heat shrink over that. So the wire kind of is as it was before it had the cut. So it's a really nice, easy tip uh, and well worth doing when it comes to wire to wire joining. And I pretty much do that every time. So I only need a tiny little bit of heat shrink over there. And that wire is good to go, whether it's on wire like this, which is typical gauge for uh, motor wire, or even some of the smaller stuff for the camera wires. Of course, it's always good to use uh, silicon coating. Uh, the plastic insulation stuff is terrible. I don't know why ESC manufacturers are still supplying ESCs with plastic insulation on the actual signal wires because, as many of you will know, um, it can be a real pain uh, when it comes to soldering because the, the, the plastic insulation just melts away. Um, but yeah, that's a little soldering tip and I hope it helps. I've got lots and lots of these. If you want some more of those, then please let me know in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next one.